Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to uh, study the next topic of chapter 13. So this is 13.5 topic and this is the equation of motion which is uh, related to the normal and tangential coordinates. So as we know that uh, when we know that a particle is moving along a known path then what we do is that we normally apply the normal and tangential coordinates right so as we have studied in the previous chapter that the t axis is, is tangent to the path at any instant and the normal coordinate system or the normal axis is uh, making 90 degrees with the tangential axis like this right they are making 90 degrees and then we have one another axis that is known as binomial axis. So the binomial axis is perpendicular to t and n axis. So in the equation of motions, what we will do is that we will apply that the summation of forces, the summation of all the forces, and that will be equal to mass times the acceleration. And since here we have three axes, so there might be a possibility that we have uh, three forces one force uh, applied on this particle p along the t axis and the force applied on this particle p along the n axis and similarly it it might have we might have the possibility that uh, there there might be a force which is acting in the b direction as well so if this is the case if we have the external applied force on this particle along all these three axes so then what we will do is that we will apply the summation of forces along the t axis is the summation of forces along the normal axis and the summation of forces along the binomial axis is right so as we know that the particle is always moving along the path so there will be acceleration along the tangential axis and then and that acceleration is known as at and there is there will always be an acceleration uh, along the n axis and that acceleration will be known as an but is we know that the particle will be moving along this part along this given path so the acceleration along the binomial axis will be zero right so we can say that a b will be equal to zero so now if we apply this summation then we will have m a t plus m a n plus m a b but since a b is zero so this this term this whole terms becomes zero right so we have only these two terms on the right side of this equation and this equation is only satisfied if this is the case if we apply all the forces all the external forces which are acting along the t axis so that will be equal to mat if all the forces that are acting along the normal axis they will be equal to man and if the forces along the binomial axis is uh, parallel to or along the binomial axis is equal to zero and we have this roller coaster as an example right so this is the roller coaster which is moving right so if we consider this particular at this particular instant so then we can say that this is the normal axis and this is the tangential axis and this roller coaster will have the tangential acceleration this will have the normal acceleration and the binomial axis will be out of the screen and one thing i should tell you people that tangential acceleration always deals with the change in change in magnitude of the velocity always remember right so we can say that a t will always be equal to dv by dt or we can say that v dv is equal to a t ds right and from this equation we can write that a t is equal to v dv by ds right so we can find a t using this equation or we can find a t using this equation Similarly, that the normal acceleration is always equal to v square divided by rho, and this is the radius of curvature. So now we are going to solve this uh, sample problem, which is related to the this particular topic, right? So in the problem, in this sample problem statement, it is said that determine the banking angle theta for the race track so that the wheels of the racing car shown in Figure 13:12a will not have to depend upon the friction. So there is no friction to prevent any car from sliding up or down the track assume the cars have negligible size mass m and travel around the curve of radius rho with a constant speed v so as i have told you people that the tangential acceleration 
is always the change in the magnitude of the velocity so here it is said that the, uh, the car is moving with a constant speed so if it is moving with a constant speed then the dv by dt is zero so this means that for this particular problem the tangential acceleration will be equal to zero and similarly we can say that a n will be equal to v square divided by rho and here rho is the radius of the curve right since it is moving along the circular path so now if we consider the free body diagram of this car so if I draw the normal axis so the normal axis will be acting towards the center of the track the binomial axis will be perpendicular and the tangential axis will be out of the screen right so this is the normal axis this is the tangential axis and this is the binomial axis and the tangential axis is out of the screen so now if we consider this as the free body diagram so this is the normal axis this is the binomial axis right the weight will always be acting in the downward direction that is in the negative binomial direction and and c is the resultant of the normal forces on the wheels of this car right so this is that and c right so and and c will be perpendicular to the path right so it, this is the path right and this and c is perpendicular and if i draw one another line like this so here we have the theta right so this and c is perpendicular to this particular line and this line or the binomial axis is, is perpendicular with this line so the angle between this line the surface of the trach and this horizontal line the angle is theta so if this angle is theta and if this nc is perpendicular with this line and this binomial axis is perpendicular with this line so the angle between the binomial axis and the resultant nc is also theta right so here in the free body diagram this theta is transformed here and the weight is acting downward right so now if we apply the equation of motions these are the equation of motion these are 13 8 right so we can say that uh, if I apply the summation of forces along the tangential axis, which will be equal to m a t, right? So, if I apply the summation of forces, so as we can see that there is no force along the tangential axis, right? And the tangential acceleration is zero. So this equation is not going to give us the answer, right? So then if I apply the summation of forces along the normal axis is that is that will be equal to m a n so <coughs> this is the normal axis so we have to resolve this and c into its components so it will have two components this will be one of the components of n c and we will have one another component which will be acting in this direction so this one is the sine component this one is the cos component so i can see say that this is n c uh, sine of theta and this is nc cos of theta so these are summation of forces along the n axis so only this nc sine of theta is acting in the positive n direction so i will write nc sine of theta and this will be equal to mass and a n and this is a n a n is v square this is a n and we can replace this a n by v square divided by rho so let me write that this is v square divided by rho so let's say this is equation 2 similarly if we apply the summation of forces along the binomial axis and that will be equal to 0 so again as we can see that this cause this nc cause of theta is acting in the positive b direction so this is nc cause of theta minus the weight so the weight acting in the negative b direction so i will write minus mg and this is equal to 0 so now we are we, we are required to find the banking angle so we need to find this angle theta right so we have two equations and we have two unknowns we have this nc as an unknown and we have this theta as an unknown so now if i bring this mg to the other side of equation so we can write that this is nc cos of theta equal to mg and let's say this is equation 3 so now if i divide equation 2 by 3 if I divide equation 2 so this is equation 2 and C sine of theta equals to m v square divided by rho 
and now I, I want to divide equation 2 by 3. So, this will be n c cos of theta divided by m g. This is remember this is rho and this is g. So, n c will cancel out and sin of theta by cos of theta is tan theta and m will cancel out. So, we will be left with v square divided by rho g and if you want to find the banking angle theta so then we need to take the tan inverse so theta will be equal to tan inverse v square divided by rho g so now as we can see that this banking angle is independent of the mass of the car right it only depends on the velocity magnitude g value and the radius of the curvature that is the radius of the curve now we are going to solve uh, this next sample problem related to that uh, similar topic so in this sample problem we it is given that the 3 kg disc d is attached to the end of card is shown in figure 13 13a the other end of the card is attached to a ball and socket joint located at the center of a plate form if the plate form rotates rapidly and the disc is placed on it and released from rest is shown the initial velocity is 0. It is said that determine the time t it takes for the disc to reach a speed great enough to break the cord and the maximum tension the cord can sustain is 100 Newton. So, the maximum tension in the cord is equal to 100 Newtons and the initial velocity is 0 and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the disc and the flight form is 0.1. So, we need to find the time that it will take for the disc to reach a speed greater enough to break the cord, right. So, that will be at that particular point the velocity will be critical velocity, right. And we need to find that time at which after which this cord will break. So, again uh, if we look into this particular problem, so the path is known and the path is circular whose radius is 1 meter. So, we can say that the row, uh, the row is 1 meter and we can apply the tangential and normal coordinate system. So, the normal axis is always acting towards the center of the path. So, we can say that this will be our normal axis. Is the tangential axis will be acting in this direction let us say that will be perpendicular to the normal axis. Is and the binomial axis will be perpendicular to both the axes. So, this is our binomial axis. So, this is the free body diagram. So, if we consider only this disc and if we break this cord, so then there will be a tension along the normal axis towards the center of the path, right. And if the plate form is moving in this direction, so this disc will move uh, in this direction relative to the plate form, right. So, it will move in this direction. So, if it is moving in the counterclockwise direction, so the disc will be moving in the clockwise direction relative to the motion of the plate form. So, if the disc is moving in the clockwise direction, so the friction force will be acting towards the tangential axis that is in the direction of the motion of the plate form. So, this is the kinetic friction and the kinetic friction will be equal to 0 0.1 times the normal force. So, the plate form will apply the normal force on the disc in the upward direction. So, this is the normal force on the disc by the plate form and similarly the weight of the disc will be acting in the negative binomial direction and its mass is 3 kg so the weight is 3 times 9.81 so that gives us 29.43 so this is the weight so now if we apply the summation of forces along the normal axis since we want to apply the equation of motion that is the kinetics. So, the summation of forces along n will be equal to m a n and as we can see that along the normal axis is we have only the tension force which is in the card right. So, we can say that T is equal to mass and the mass of the disc is 3 kg remember. So, this will be 3 times a n and we know that a n is always a equal to v square divided by rho and since rho is 1 meter, so we can say that an is equal to v square. So, we can say that this is 3 v square. So, this is equation 1. Now, if we apply the summation of forces along the tangential axis, that will be equal to m a t. 
So, as we can see that along the tangential axis is we have this kinetic friction which is 0.1 nd and it is acting in the positive t direction. So, I will write plus 0.1 nd and that will be equal to since there is no other force along the tangential axis. So, this is 0.1 nd and that will be equal to m a t and the mass is 3. So, we need to write 3. So, this is equation 2. Similarly, if we apply the summation of forces along the binomial axis which will be equal to 0 since there is no motion along the binomial axis. So, there is no acceleration along this axis that is perpendicular to the normal and tangent axis, tangential axis. So, as we can see that this N d is acting in the positive v direction. So, I will write N d minus that weight which is acting in the negative v direction which is 29.43. And this will be equal to 0 and let us say this is equation 3. So, from equation 3 we can say that N d equals to the weight of the disc and if I put this N d in this equation 2. So, from this equation 2 we can write that tangential acceleration is equal to 0.1 N d and N d is 29.43 divided by so, this is 0 0.1 times 29.43 divided by 3. So, the tangential acceleration is 0 0.981 meter per second square and similarly, we can find the critical velocity at which the cord will break. So, if we put t equals to t max in equation 1 which is 100 Newton. So, from this equation 1 we can write that 100 will be equal to 3 v square and at that particular instant the velocity will be critical right. So, we can say that v critical square will be equal to 100 divided by 3 and if we take the square root so that will give us the critical velocity magnitude. So, 100 divided by 3. So, the critical velocity is 5.77 meter per second. So, 5.77 meter per second. Now, at the end we need to determine the time t it takes for the disc to reach a speed great enough to break the card. So, we need to find the time for the disc at which the disc will achieve the velocity equal to this critical velocity. So, then we can apply this will be the final velocity remember right at the time of breakage this will be the final velocity. So, we can apply the kinematics equation right. So, we can say that V critical is equal to V naught plus A T T right since the tangential acceleration only deals with the change in the magnitude of the velocity. So, we need to use the tangential acceleration magnitude here in this particular equation and the initial velocity is 0 since it is said that it starts from rest right it re is released from rest. So, this is 0. So, from this equation we can write that t will be equal to v critical divided by the tangential acceleration magnitude. So, v critical is 5.77 and the tangential acceleration magnitude is 0. 981. So, 5.77 divided by 0 0.981. So, this is 5.88 seconds. So, the card will break uh, will take 5.88 seconds until its uh, breaking point. So, I hope you people would have understood these two sample problems. I will solve the next two sample problems in the coming video. So, kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed my channel yet. Also, like uh, all my videos if they helps in your learning.